It's a day that ends with Y, so it must be another poop on America day. So the uh, Daily Beast here has a, this wonderful article. I'm sure I'm. Uh, uh, I haven't read it. We're gonna do that live right now. Live. I'm recording this, but still, you get the point. Uh, so, right now, we're evacuating Afghanistan. Uh, we look like Vietnam 2.0 this time. Uh, it's revenge. You know, it's just it's, it's awful. Uh, helicopters. Taking people off rooftops. Uh, they're having to burn American flags. So the enemy doesn't get them. And use them for propaganda. Uh, <laughs> CNN has a reporter saying that they're chanting death to America in the streets. But uh, uh, it's still mostly peaceful. I mean, you can see her saying this. Jeez. Clown world. But anyway... The Daily Beast has had their own shot because we're coming up on an anniversary for 9-11 and they happened to say the museum co-founder, co-founder, I thought that was like the, uh, I, don't know, I never really thought about who built it there. I just figured it was a uh, uh, co, um, you know, type uh, building with the, uh, the government, the Park Service and New York. Uh, I know that I think was it where the uh, in Pennsylvania uh, was Scott Beamer where uh, that flight went down. Uh, the National Park Service is in charge of it. What I was saying. So I saw something. I don't know. Who cares? Let's go over this. Uh, he wanted it to be critical of America's war in Afghanistan and Iraq. Of course, perfect timing, right? I mean, like, he had freaking. 20 years to say something, but he wants to say something now. That's like saying, uh, hey, uh, you know, uh, it really dropping bombs on uh, uh, Japan, uh, you know, we could have just done a, uh, a trade embargo. I mean, it's stupid. You're going to say that now after, after the fact. After the fact, it's all happened. Instead of supporting your country and looking like... Why do you support your country? It's your fellow man, dude. It's like the people next door. It's the people you haven't met. It's people all over. Just be a, a freaking... Uh, anything but the turd that you are. Uh, let's see. The new... is a new doc... Uh, documentary. Uh, like, see. It's the doc. The new doc. The outsider uh, revisits the internal disputes over how... I mean, jeez, internal disputes. Or how uh, New York City's 9-11 Memorial and Museum should pay tribute to its victims and be critical of the U.S. wars in its wake. It's a memorial. Do you know what a memorial is? All right, you dummies. A memorial is a remembrance of lives that mattered to someone else. All right? Uh, museums are living history, so to speak. <sighs> Museums are supposed to inspire critical thought. And you're supposed to put yourself in that person's shoes and think what it was like on that day, how it was to handle the things. And, and remember that those people did the best that they could uh, given the circumstances and the way it was at that time it happened, okay? Not something like 20 years later or 200 years later and rethink the way someone used to think, all right? That's not how uh, museums are meant to be. You, you're, God, what happened to critical thought? What happened to it? You know, everybody who doesn't have critical thought, anyone who can't, before they say something, argue for both sides of the argument before they uh, come to a... Uh, before they start running their mouth off on something, you don't deserve to be saying anything, okay? Because really, you're not a major leaguer, okay? You're the person buying tickets. Uh, you don't even do that. You're lucky to catch a score on the radio, if you even know what a radio is. There's a stark difference between a museum and a memorial. The former aims to... Oh, see, I didn't even get to... I didn't even read this yet. They're already uh, quoting me. Uh, four aims to present an enlightening historical account of a specific subject, while the latter uh, seeks to pay tribute to a tragedy of those who lost lives. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. I didn't make, I make sure. Because... Okay, museum and then this memorial. Okay, look, your headline here says memorial and museum. You don't need to switch that up to museum and memorial. That's what messed me up. Oh, they can't even... If you write it, if you write this, okay, this should match that. You know what? We're just going to make you a special. Oh, it's, I'm on safari. Oh, I can't do it on safari, can I? It's going to highlight it. Can I highlight it? Oh, that's okay. They changed uh, the title when you go over here. So now it's a whole nother. They don't have this over there. God, man, just can't you just make it the same way, the way it's supposed to be, you idiots? Uh, let's skip on down here. Uh, the intentions are sometimes obviously at odds with each other. The complications of reconciling them is like the Harley creation in New York City's 9-11 Memorial and Museum, whose conception, development, and construction proved to be immensely controversial. Even the final product, which now exists in Lower Manhattan at the original side of the World Trade Center towers, is now an esteemed and popular draw for millions of tourists each year. What's controversial about it? The outside premiering August 20th through a Brahma Rama's watch. Now at home, I, I've never heard of a Brahma Rama. I don't need another streaming service. I'm not going to mention that again. Uh, as a non-fiction, Inside Peak, the birth of the 9-11 Memorial Museum, told through the prism of Michael Shulan, a novelist who was living in Soho in 2001 when Al-Qaeda terrorists flew two planes into the Twin Towers, forever changing the city, the country, and the world. After seeing his fellow New Yorkers intensely respond to a publicly, to publicly displayed newspaper article about 9-11 coming up, to it and touching it as if to pay silent tribute. Shulan posted his own photograph of the towers on the window of his empty storefront. If it's empty, it's not a store. Uh, that eventually begat Here is New York, a crowdsourced photo exhibit of snapshots of the fateful day, which garnered media headlines and in the process turned Shulan into the nation's de facto authority on 9 11 imagery. I bet you I've watched more video of it. Uh, it, it sickens me, and I, I really take the never forget to heart, and always around like this time of year, uh, as we get draw closer and closer to it, uh, I go back and um, watch, you know, the towers after they're hit, and then when you see, you see the, well, if you hear the uh, first bodies hitting from. Um, uh, the firemen that are inside, they're like, what's that noise? And it's people that were jumping out. I just recently learned that they think some of them uh, blindly walked out. And then I got kind of uh, uh, drawn into the one guy, the falling man is what it's referred to as the picture of the guy with a white shirt and black pants on. They think he was a, uh, a waiter on the uh, restaurant that was at the top of the World Trade Center. He's a devout Catholic and... Um, it would have been a sin for him to take his own life. And his family doesn't think that was him, while others do. And um, it's just, uh, it's a surreal and sickening uh, thing. That is uh, more surreal and sickening to me than um, uh, Las Vegas, uh, October 1. And I have lived through that one as it was happening too, and had uh, more connections to it. Uh, it was, uh, um, I mean, I wasn't there for any of these things. It's just, it's like, you know, I, I wasn't, it's a long story. I, I don't want to go into it. I'm sorry. I'm going to get back here to this, this thing. Sorry to bring down the, the conversation there for a second. Uh, that's the last general impression inspired by an outsider. Uh, let's see here. Shulan was often a man alone, fighting to keep his vision for the memorial. So now it's become his, okay? It's become his. It's not everybody's. It's his vision for the memorial museum alive in the face of opposition and pressure. Uh, that's the least. Uh, that's at least the general impression imparted by the outsider, considering that Shulan winds up being only part of the story told by Rosenbaum and Yoder's 
documentary. Uh, to be sure, Shulan's presence is front and center early on in, fanta- in fantastic footage of him, Greenwald, and colleagues uh, bandying about ideas about the space, deliberating about the appropriations of certain images and artifacts. Blah, blah, blah. Became an intense push and pull. Okay, so like, these people that wrote this have never been to a school board meeting. Shulan sought to create a place that, uh, whose pose... Oh, okay, here, here, this. I, I knew they had to get to the, back to the uh, headline here. So the dude shot, uh, sought to create a place that would pose as many questions as it provided answers. And that increasingly put him in conflict with its collaborators. Oh, they probably understood, you know, a little bit better. So the closer the 9-11 Memorial Museum got to completion, the more it drifted away from, the, from ambiguity and towards certainty. And in archival interviews from the time, Shalon speaks openly about these topics. They're blessed with a wealth of behind-the-scenes material from the front period, the cameras situated in boardrooms and blah, blah, blah. The best I can marry is an unvarnished look at a very messy task of serving multiple masters and an atmosphere of unbelievably charged political and social pressures. I mean, these people, oh my gosh, New Yorkers. The reason why I've never met a New Yorker, never met somebody born and raised in New York City, and I know why now, because they don't realize there's a world outside of that place. They are like, I mean, <sighs> I don't know what. There's something there's weird there, there's something wrong, man. Just something wrong. Um her own significant on camera input of oh, the protagonist is uh uh some chick blah 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 trying to balance various demands and objectives on a project that can't possibly please everyone. Yeah, so she did good. Her own significant on-camera input throughout the outside illustrates the enormous challenge of crafting something that everyone agrees is comprehensive, informative, and uh, reverential. Both Greenwald and Shalon uh, do that stuff. Okay. In the end, that Greenwald's ideas won out over others is neither good nor bad. Rather, it just seems like the byproduct of a collaborative endeavor that eventually needed someone to make a final decision that would place that would please the greatest number of people. Yeah, that's how it works. That's how it works. Dude, I mean, that's just how life works. Yeah, it may not be the best thing for you. Let me tell you what, nothing's the best thing for me because I like things so much better than everybody else does. But you know what? It's like American cheese. Everybody eats American cheese. They go through a drive-thru and they're eating American cheese. I don't like American cheese. It sucks. If it ain't cheddar, I don't want it. And not just any cheddar. I like aged cheddar. I prefer a white cheddar. You can't age cheddar enough for me. For a burger, maybe an extra shot might be a little too much. Mm, I don't know. I have to try it out. But still, American cheese sucks. It is like the uh, uh, consolation prize to being the ugliest at the fair. It is the worst thing ever. They slide on everything. Everybody eats it. And you know what? It satisfies the biggest amount of people. And it doesn't satisfy me. And I still deal with that fact. And I just don't get it. I just don't get it. I'm like, eh, no. You guys enjoy your cheeseburger. I'll enjoy my hamburger. Good graciousness. Yes, how it works, man. The, uh, you got to please the greatest number of people. So have conversations with, among others, Shulon, Let Exhibit Designer, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? This was like written just to get people's names in here. That's what Shulon, he eventually disappears from the outside altogether. Yeah, because he's an artist. He's a Fruit Loop. His departure from the project uh, noted only by Texodial Kata. A rather fitting conclusion for a movie that ultimately loses sight of its main subject. So he just couldn't handle... Just sitting there, just going to meetings. I mean, he has a right. He was there at the beginning. Just stick through it, okay? I'll go back and read this here. Let's see here. Um, elements that are critical of the U.S. that result in... Here's the thing. You be critical of U.S. foreign policy. That's a bunch of elite assholes in Washington, D.C. These people on September 11th in the World Trade Center, those secretaries, they didn't have anything to do with that. That guy just talking about the waiter, he didn't have anything to do with that. These were people that on Tuesday just wanted to go work 
back then, you know, I mean, like, what, what was going on that week? You gotta look up. It's like, you know, I'm sure, like, DVDs were coming out that week. You know, new ones. Uh, there was something, there was, there was, that weekend, somebody was gonna go to a wedding, I'm sure. And they kissed their loved one goodbye, and they went to work just like any other day. Except this was just a Tuesday. And Tuesday's the greatest day of the week. It is the, everything is the way it should be on Tuesday. And then these all of Jababas, whatever they say, uh, go flying. Go they use United States aircraft as weapons of mass destruction against the secretaries, the window washers. You know those guys. Uh, uh, they got uh, wiped out as well. Uh, you know the the cooks, the waiters. The uh, gosh, the firemen for crying out loud, the the firemen, um, the police, the cl uh, men of God, uh, you, uh, janitors. I mean, just people that just Americans, just people that just they were excited about the score. You know, the the Yankees or the Mets. You know, I mean, stuff like that. It's these people. They weren't doing anything to a bunch of dumbasses sitting around Saudi Arabia uh, drinking um, uh, refined oil. I mean, who knows what they do? I mean, I, they do a lot of weird stuff. So, anyway, uh, yeah, to say that you're going to be critical about U.S. policy is that just sucks, man. That's just that is wrong. That's your own bigotry, okay? It's your own stupid, crushed up feelings. You're gonna, you're, you're thinking that this is my chance to really show somebody how intelligent I am. So, you know what? The smartest man in the room is the dummy. And if you can figure that one out, then y you know what I'm saying. Anyway, Daily Beast, you suck just as bad as. Uh, Shulo here, whatever his name is, the guy that has a storefront that's empty, and uh, also suck just as bad as everybody else. As uh, I was, what's going on in Afghanistan right now? Uh, pray for those guys over there. You know, uh, 9 11. I'll tell you something that happened 9 11. Uh, uh there's a football player that was so moved by what happened that day that he joined uh, the army. What was his name? I just dropped it. I can see him. You guys know who I'm talking about. Anyway, and he got killed in Afghanistan. And now we're just giving them all. It's the biggest weapons deal, arms deal in the world is what just happened. You know what? They can all sit on a duck. Hey, be good to each other. Godspeed. Give me a like. Give me a follow. I just build these numbers up. Screw the algorithms around. And may God bless you. Godspeed. And be good to somebody. We're all stuck on this rock together. Let's make this work. All right? Don't let the other people get you down. Other than that, y'all, until next time, peace.